We head a bit further south to Kenya now, which has done something interesting, economically speaking. It's revised the size of its economy, that is, reinterpreting the figures and the measures used to create a new reality. Now, Kenya's exercise makes it now the ninth largest economy in Africa, and we're going to talk with a leading economic figure about that in a moment. But what about everyone else? Catherine Soy investigates now whether an economic revision means anything to the everyday Kenyan. Kenya is one of several African countries to rebase its economy in recent years. The economy is mainly based on agriculture, tourism and manufacturing, but sectors like banking, ICT and telecommunication have grown. Oil has also been discovered in the north. Attaining a middle income status raises a country's profile to attract investors and to borrow more money, but it does not do much for the ordinary person. Kenyans will be just as poor or just as wealthy as they were a year ago. All that the new GDP estimates tell us is that the economy is a lot worth more than we had thought. It tells us nothing about how that wealth is distributed. In 2008, the government launched an ambitious program called Vision 2030 that was to transform Kenya to a thriving middle-income economy by 2030. This announcement comes 16 years ahead of the deadline. The government has invested heavily on infrastructure across the country, but corruption and misuse of funds have slowed down progress in many parts. Infrastructure itself will not uh, actually make the economy grow in a more aggressive manner. We need also to deal with the issues of unfair distribution of uh, income. Grace Modoni hopes that the progress she's been hearing about reaches her soon. She lives in a single house with her children and grandchildren and barely makes enough money to get by. This is where she does her daily shopping. The slum has its own vibrant economy called Kadogo or little. Everything sold in small quantities. Her shopkeeper tells us that it's the only way to keep families afloat. With shopping worth about a dollar and a half, Modoni will be able to make supper for her nine grandchildren. It's not enough, but what can we do? I just make them eat what is there. We will not satisfy them, but at least we'll hold them off for now. So until its benefits trickle down, a bigger economy means nothing to Modoni and millions of other Kenyans living on under $2 a day. And with a high cost of living, a widening gap between the rich and the poor, and the huge income disparities, many are not optimistic. But despite that, Kenya does have a vision, on paper at least, and the man charged with charting a course for Kenya's economy is Gituru Wainana. He is the CEO of Vision 23 in Kenya. He joins us now from Nairobi. Mr Wainana, when we talk about a vision for what is 15 years away in the end, what is that vision? What is the goal and the ambition of Kenya? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, the, the ambition for us as a, as a country, it provides us a roadmap, it provides us a direction and our ultimate goal is to provide high quality life for every Kenyan, irrespective of where that Kenyan is in this country, irrespective of the social status. We are talking of giving them high quality life, be it in education, be it in health, be it in infrastructure. That has to be done by us transforming this country to a middle level income, which is knowledge based. And this is what the Vision 2030 is all about about issues of economics, about issues of social sector, and issues of the politics of the country. Okay then, so one of the steps we've seen just recently is the revising of the size of Kenya's economy. I mentioned it to our viewers a moment ago. How does that actually help? Because it really is just a, it's a changing yes. and a reinterpreting and a manipulating of the numbers. Uh, it's not going to make a huge difference, at least right now, for, for the everyday Kenyan, is it? Yes, you're right, but uh, we have to look at the basing from two perspectives. I think the first perspective, which I think is extremely important, is first to appreciate that, yes, we were using 2001 as a base year. There are other sectors which have grown up since then. And on that account, like ICT, we really had to rebase and look at those new sectors like housing, ICT. And that did capture the real economy now. Now, it, that is important in terms of looking at your balance sheet, because what you're really saying in terms of our balance sheet, we have a better balance sheet than before. Mm. And therefore, it gives people confidence to borrow on that balance sheet or 
for people to have confidence in that country. The second part of it, and I think this is what is extremely important, rebasing does not necessarily mean that the citizens have more resources in their pockets, therefore they can buy goods and services. All what it does is to appreciate and recognize that certain sectors have been brought into the economy. Now, what will take us to that high level, to middle income level, is indeed implementing the various projects under the Vision 2030, and that's what will transform the lives of the Kenyans. Mm. I'm talking about, if you finish the infrastructure, in terms of Ramport, South Sudan, and the Open Corridor. I'm talking of the started gauge line from Mombasa all the way to Kigari. I'm talking of uh, doing the airport. I'm talking of our Silicon Valley, the Kansas, the Kansas City. Those, finishing those projects, implementing those projects, is what is going to change their lives. Can you tell us more about what sort of state the balance sheet is in? Africa Development, is, Development Bank I'm sorry, is saying you need to raise $4 billion a year just to meet infrastructure needs. Now, is that money there to be put into those projects so that then those projects can start creating more money? Yes and no, it's not there, but, uh, uh, but it, ha it provides us an opportunity to borrow either internally or externally. And I think that's the point we need to emphasize as a country one area we really would like to borrow from is the internal uh, borrowing. I'm talking of issues, uh, talking like uh, initiative like equity. I'm looking at uh, the, the, the transformation uh, which has been put uh, under the, the master plan of the capital markets, mm. which clearly indicates the areas where we can borrow internally. Uh, perhaps giving an example, uh, it's, it's in our high agenda. Uh, the pipeline from Ram all the way to South Sudan and, 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 and Sudan and to Kana most likely will be built through equity. Uh, that we are talking of, uh, of uh, providing infrastructure bonds. We are talking of uh, people buying equity. We are, trying to, uh, we are talking of uh, uh, people buying from the securities market, Nairobi securities market. So that provides one side of, of, of it in terms of borrowing the $4 billion. The, the other side of it is going uh, to the development partners. And, and here we are looking at people like the African Development Bank. We are looking at the, the, the bilateral with people like, uh, the, the, like China. We are looking at bilateral with people like the UK. And that also provides us an opportunity of uh, raising the four billion. In the next five years or so, we are seeing us uh, being an oil and gas exporting country. That will enhance uh, uh, the requirement for the infrastructure. Because we, are, we, we, we see infrastructure ex extremely important, providing the, 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 the ease of doing business, providing movement of goods and services. Without getting too negative or dwelling on negative points, I think there is something we really do have to address here, and that is what is happening in Kenyan politics. You're president in front of the, uh, the International yes. Criminal Court, exactly. Do you worry about what that will do? Um, so far as, well, concerning investors, yes. really, the fact that this sort of news, this sort of insecurity, which has been in Kenyan politics for a long time, might make people nervous, might make them not want to come there. That's something, uh, today the, the, the local newspapers, is interesting that the popularity of the president has gone up by 72%, uh, just what happened uh, last week in ICC. Uh, we are seeing that, in our view, uh, as it's going, perhaps, perhaps not so much evidence. But I think we should go beyond that. Certain initiative this president has taken, certain initiative the government has taken, he has been all over the world, even when this case is, uh, is hanging there, and has made serious uh, investment uh, agreement with the various countries. I'm talking about in the U.S., I'm talking China, I'm talking Russia, I'm talking in the, in the U.K. So that, in our view, this country has no impact or will have no impact as such in terms of the investment. That is Gituru Wainana talking Kenya 2030 with us on Counter Because this week. We thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it and you have a good day.